You know, most of us consider wild horses a symbol of the American West, a chunk of Americana, but there's always been a struggle to manage the balance between farming and ranching and the horses. Now the Humane Society of the United States is doing research on the horses and their effect on land and environment. Holly Hazard is in Albuquerque to talk about the issue. Holly, thank you so much for coming in. Now, why did the Humane Society decide to get involved? Well, we are uh, very disturbed with the, uh, the strategies that the federal government has taken to care for the wild horses on the range. There's about 30,000 horses on the range, and remarkably, there's about the same number in being held in captivity. Uh, and um, we're, we are frustrated that uh, next year, the government is planning to take another third of the horses off the range and really has no place to put them. So what does that mean? We see them have these auctions. What else happens? Well, they have auctions, and sometimes they go to wonderful adoptive homes, but uh, Wild horses are, are a special kind of a horse, and they need a special home. And we're very concerned that many times they don't end up in a great home. They can end up going to a, a facility that doesn't know how to care for horses or, at worst, to go for slaughter. And uh, we think there's a better way. So what are some of the ways that you're looking at? Well, we've got a uh, contraceptive that's been developed uh, that uh, is about 90% effective in wild horses. And what we're trying to do is to push the government to use that with horses and to allow the horses to remain free on the range, contracepted, and, uh, and to live out their lives where they, where they should be. Okay, now how does this work? To stop these horses and geld the males and all of that, how does this work? It's very different. It's very different. It's very different. It's, uh, it, it affects the, the, the female only, and it affects her ability to to have an egg fertilized. So uh, she needs to be darted, and it's a contraception. It's not a sterilant, so uh, the, uh, a, a female horse can be contracepted and then five years later have a foal, but instead of having three or four or five foals in her lifetime, she might only have one or two. And that's really all we need to get the population in check and to, and to have the horses free on the range and to be able to see them for in our lifetime and then for generations to come. All right, what happens if you dart a stallion, and also how long does it last with the mares? Well, it has no impact on a stallion. He doesn't have the eggs, so there's no problem. And what it is is it's a naturally occurring protein. So there's no problem with it if it's released into the environment. And as I say, for a female, uh, she can be contracepted and then um, be able to uh, have a foal successfully in a few years down the road. So, okay. And also cost is a big issue. How much do these darts run? Well, that's actually the great part of this, uh, is that currently the federal government is spending incredibly two-thirds of the budget they have to manage wild horses on the range, taking care of the ones they've pulled off and they have in holding. It's an affront to the American taxpayer, and it's also not the best way to manage the horses. It costs about $200 to dart one horse, but if a horse is taken off the range, given vet care, and put in a long-term holding facility, the first year that costs $1,500, and then it costs $500 every year thereafter. So from an economic standpoint, you're better off spending $200 and letting that animal go back out and live out its life in the wild. Being considered here in New Mexico very quickly. It's, it's, uh, we, we've, we're working with the Carson National Forest, and we're hoping to expand that program so those beautiful animals on that beautiful range uh, can stay right where they belong. All right, and tonight you're going to be talking about this. Here's some information about this. This is going to be America's Wild Horses. This is tonight at the UNM Law School, 7 o'clock, room 2401. It's 1117 Stanford, and if you have any questions, you can go to that event. I want to thank you so much for thank coming you. in. Intriguing. Okay.